What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. As always, we are finishing up the English and language usage portion of the ATIT's version seven, where we'll be discussing vocabulary acquisition. Let's get started. So starting off with the objectives for vocabulary acquisition, there's gonna be a total of 10 questions that are scored out of the overall 33 for this portion of the test. The objectives that you will need to know is how to apply basic knowledge of the elements of the writing process to communicate effectively and determining the meaning of words by analyzing word parts. So we're going to begin by looking at steps in the writing process. Each step of the writing process is really important in order to produce a well written piece. There are a total of five steps in this process, pre-writing, writing, conferencing, revision, and editing. The ATITs will expect you to have the knowledge of how to perform each step. We're gonna break each one of these down, starting with pre-writing. Pre-writing is the process of planning and brainstorming for a piece of writing. This is where you come up with ideas and decide what you want to write about. There are many different kinds of pre-writing techniques that you can use, such as brainstorming, stream of consciousness writing, as well as mind mapping. So let's break each one of these down. Brainstorming is when you come up with ideas by brainstorming with yourself or with a group of people. Stream of consciousness writing is when you just start writing without stopping to think about what you're going to write next. And then lastly, mind mapping is when you create a visual map of your ideas for your writing. Once we have determined our pre-writing, we start with writing. Once you have a plan with some kind of ideas of what you want to do, you're going to want to take all of those pre-writing pieces and turn them into a complete paragraph or a complete passage. So remember, you need to keep your audience as well as your purpose in mind when you're writing. You're going to want to create a piece of writing that includes both an introduction, body paragraphs, as well as a conclusion. So you have an introductory paragraph, body paragraphs talking about your introductory paragraph, and then a conclusion summarizing everything up. Each paragraph must state a main idea and develop that main idea through supporting details. It's also really important to remember to cite anything that you are borrowing for your writing. So conferencing might be a little bit of a new topic for some people, and that is really when you talk to someone about your writing. That's usually a teacher or some kind of tutor. It's a really good time to get feedback about your ideas, organization, as well as the development of what you're writing. Your conferencer will also help you with your grammar, spelling, as well as other conventions of standard English. So once you have a complete draft and you have received some kind of feedback, it's really time to start revising your piece. This is where that revision piece starts to come in. This is when you make changes to your writing based on the feedback that you received. You might want to add, delete, or rearrange information that's going to be found in that piece. You might also change the way that you develop your ideas or the way that you decided to organize them in your passage. And the last part of the writing process is editing. After you have made all your changes that you wanted to make with your revision stage, it's time to start editing your passage. Editing is when you check for grammar, spelling, as well as other conventions of standard English. It's also a good idea to check the fluency of your sentences and the overall clarity that the audience is going to perceive from your passage. And lastly, while this is not part of the writing process, it's really something that you truly need to know, and that is citations. Anytime that you have borrowed material in your passage, it has to be cited in your text. This includes anything from books, articles, websites, or even maybe people that you interviewed. If you borrow somebody else's ideas, then you have to give them credit for it. If you are quoting somebody directly, you'll make, want to make sure you're using those quotation marks. And if you're paraphrasing something someone else said, then again, you want to provide them credit as you are paraphrasing. Citations usually come at the end of the sentence or just right before the period. And my favorite part of the ATITs is determining the meaning of words by analyzing word parts. I get super excited about this because I do this in everyday life. If I don't understand a word, I look it up and now I have a new word for my vocabulary, right? 
So we're going to be looking at prefixes, suffixes, how to determine what the word means, as well as affixes. So starting with prefixes, a prefix is a group of letters that are added to the beginning of a word to change its meaning. So for example, the prefix un, un, can be added to the word happy to create the word unhappy, right? Happy is we're really happy, we're joyful, and unhappy is maybe we're sad and we're depressed. It's important to note that prefixes do not change a word's part of speech. The word happy is an adjective, and the word unhappy is also an adjective. Now we have suffixes. Just like prefixes, the only difference is, is that it is added to the end of the word to change its meaning. So for example, the suffix ness, N-E-S-S, -S, can be added to the word happy to create happiness. What you'll note is that when you add the N-E-S-S, -S, we change the Y to an I. Make sure that you go check out my previous video where we discussed those different kind of rules when it comes to changing letters when you're adding prefixes and suffixes. Suffixes come in two forms. We have inflection as well as derivational. So inflection is when a suffix is added to a word to show grammatical function but does not change the essential meaning. So for example, the plural marker s can be added to the word cat, creating the word cats. Whereas with derivational, it's when a suffix is added to a word to create a new word with a different meaning. So for example, the suffix full, f-u-l, can be added to the word hate, creating the word hateful. So sometimes you're going to have to look at the root word in order to determine what the word means. A root word is a word that can stand alone as a complete word. It does not need a prefix or a suffix to make a complete word. So for example, the word happen can stand alone as a complete word. But if the prefix un is added, it creates the word unhappen. And if the suffix ed, ed, is added, it creates the word happened. So how do we determine a word's meaning? Well, once you understand the meaning of the root word, it becomes much easier to determine the meaning of the word that contains that root. So for example, a root word bene means good. So if you see a word such as benefit, you can only determine that it has a positive connotation. It also helps to know your prefixes and your suffixes. So remember that the word's parts of speech can also be a clue to its meaning. So for example, the word happen is a verb, which means that it is a action word. So if you see the word happen in a sentence, it's likely that it has something to do with an action that is taking place. Lastly, we're gonna be looking at combining affixes with root words. Sometimes more than one affix will be added to a root word. An affix is added to the root word to create a new word with a different meaning. When this happens, it's really important to determine the meaning of each affix and then combine those meanings to determine the meaning of that new word. So for example, the root word regret means disappointed over. The affix, or I should say the suffix full, F-U-L, means having the characteristic or form of. And the suffix L-Y means in a manner or way indicated by the suffix. So when you put all of these words together, the word regretfully means having the characteristic of a regretful manner. I hope that this information was helpful in understanding the last portion of our ATIT's vocabulary acquisition. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to www.nursechung.com where there is a ton of additional resources available to help you pass your ATITs. And as always, I will see you in the next videos. Bye.